Hello students, welcome to the class. We will continue our discussion in the geometrical optics. In geometrical optics, we were discussing about the spherical mirror. We have seen many situations. We have seen the ray diagram. We have seen the magnification. We have seen many cases of concave and convex mirror. Now, here I would like to discuss with you Newton's formula. Newton's formula. Newton's formula is if we take a concave mirror and here is the focus if the object is here at a distance x and the image is formed at a distance y this is the distance x and this is your focus f then what is the relation between x f and y that will give you the answer what is newton's formula so find relation between x f and y this relation will give you the newton's formula now in this relation if we want to find about this is your object this is your image this is x p y is the concave mirror now you see if i like to if i say about u here u is equals to x plus f this distance is from focus so distance from pole is x plus f and image distance v is equals to y plus f so therefore 1 by v plus 1 by u is equals to 1 by f this gives you the relation 1 by x plus f plus 1 by y plus f is equals to 1 by f this is giving you y plus f y plus f plus x plus f is equals to 1 by f this relation is giving you x plus y plus 2f into f is equals to xy multiply it xy plus xf plus yf plus f square this is giving you xf plus yf plus 2f square is equals to xf plus xy plus yf plus f square so you can keep xy plus xf plus yf plus f square this is giving you xf xf will cancel yf yf will cancel so if we say 2f square minus f square is equals to xy this tells f square is equals to xy so f is equals to xy this relation is basically the newton's formula this is called your newton's formula this we don't use many times we don't use because this is the distance we have measured from focus this is the distance we have measured from focus so if the distance in the question is given that distance of object from focus it is given and distance of image from focus it is given then only we can use this formula that f is square is equals to x y or f is equals to x y now in this situation how can we understand one example that here example is there 
concave mirror is there focus is your 20 centimeter and position of object is your 30 centimeter then find the position of image so in this case if we use the formula f is equals to x y focus is here so this distance is basically your 10 centimeter because f so 10 so distance from focus so f square is equals to x y x is your 10 into y and f square is your 400 so this is giving so y is equals to 40 centimeter now main problem is here that y is equals to 40 centimeter this y is distance from focus now this formula does not give any hint that whether this y is from this side of focus or that side of focus therefore we don't use this formula frequently you will find here in this case the y image distance is somewhere here you find 1 by b is equals to 1 by f minus 1 by u that is 1 by 20 minus 1 by 30 so this is your 60 and 3 minus 2 that is 1 by 60 so b is equals to 60 centimeter v is equals to 60 centimeter when v is equals to 60 centimeter naturally it is in this side and it should be 40 centimeter from here so from here if the image is there if the image is here this distance is your 60 centimeter and from here this distance is your 40 centimeter so we don't use this formula frequently we only use this formula to check the value of f and you should remember that this formula is useful but it has the shortcoming that it will not give you whether the image is formed in this side or that side therefore we generally do not use this formula for finding the value of u and v better if the distance is given from focus then you can use this formula otherwise use this formula for test only that whether f is equals to x or y under root is there or not now we will try to understand some hidden concept of ray diagram that is very important and that will build your concept in a stronger way about the ray diagram see in ray diagram we have seen that if the object is at infinity the image is formed at focus and that is of point size so here is the object and here is the image now this is center of curvature if the object comes from infinity to center of curvature before center of curvature you try to understand suppose here is the object you will get image somewhere here you will get image somewhere here now see try to understand what i want to convey to you people this is your image distance b this is your object distance u so when image is moving in this direction what you have observed when object is moving in this direction what you have observed image is moving in this direction so and you also observed that u is greater than v for here so u is greater than v as the object is moving so u is the function of time that means object is changing its position with respect to time 
v is changing v is also the function of time that is v is also changing its position with time and therefore if we differentiate du by dt must be greater than dv by dt so what it tells velocity of object is greater than velocity of image try to understand this is the first result that we are getting first result that we are getting that when the object is moving from infinity to center of curvature velocity of object is greater than velocity of image now magnitude wise direction you have seen that direction it is moving in this direction it is moving in this direction direction is negative next thing is there if the object has reached at center of curvature image is also formed at center of curvature so this was the first case at center of curvature at c u is equals to v so du by dt is equals to dv by dt that means velocity of object is equals to velocity of image magnitude wise remember re repeatedly i am telling about the magnitude because speed because direction is opposite object will be going in this direction and image will be going in this direction if we come into the third region that is from center of curvature to focus if here is the object we will be getting the image in this side so if object has moved from center of curvature to focus the image has moved from center of curvature to infinity so between c and f that is object is moving from c to f when the object is moving from c to f here you see this distance is basically your u and this distance is basically your v so what you observe u is less than v therefore du by dt must be less than dv by dt this is our third result this is our third result if we talk about the focus if we talk about the focus or i will tell you after this that what will happen with focus if i am moving from this side and if i am moving from this side so better you take this next region that is in the region of i will talk about the focus later on after this if the object has reached in this region then naturally you are observing the image somewhere here that is magnified you understand that object is between pole and focus the image is magnified now if we talk about the image is magnified that we have understood but how to find the relation between u and v how can we say about u and v so this thing i would like to tell you v by u is equals to height of image by height of object now we don't have the idea of v and u we don't have the idea whether v is greater or u is greater that we don't have the idea but certainly we know that h i is greater than h o height of image is greater than height of object therefore v should be greater than u and this implies dv by dt must be greater than du by dt this is this tells velocity of image should be greater than velocity of object these four results you all should keep in mind in order to keep this fact there that how the velocity relation is there if the object is moving along the principal axis from infinity to pole so i hope this will clarify your concept regarding the velocity 
when it is greater than the object, when it is smaller than the object, when it is equal and like that only you have understood it. Now the same elaboration I will give you in such a way that this concept will further clarify your understanding of the velocity concept. In case of concave mirror, suppose provided you remember the ray diagram in a proper way. Here is the infinity and here is the object. Now you see object is moving. Here is your focus. Here is your center of curvature. Now the object is moving towards the pole x, p, y is the mirror. Now see carefully, the object is moving towards the center of curvature. When the object is at infinity, the image is at focus, that you understand. When the object starts moving towards the center of curvature, the image starts moving in this way. Why I have discussed in this way? Because slowly the size is increasing and when the object reaches the center of curvature, here you see, object reaches the center of curvature, image is also at center of curvature. So you see, this is the object line. object is moving in this way and image is moving in this way. When the object is moving from center of curvature to focus, the image is moving from infinity and it is highly magnified. You are observing, this is the image line, image line. This is the image line that the object is moving and its size is increasing. You see how the size is increasing when object has reached near the focus, the object, the image has reached near infinity. Here you see, here the image has reached. Now just before, just at this point, when object is very near to focus, the ob the image is very near to infinity. If you talk about this point which is just outside the focus, then again the object will be at infinity. Try to understand, but this time virtual. So it will be somewhere here, infinity highly magnified. Now you see, object has just moved from little bit distance before focus to little bit distance after focus. The image has moved from this infinity real side to virtual side. Try to understand, the image has moved so slight movement of object from f minus a small distance x to f plus a small distance x has taken the inf object image from here real infinity to virtual image at infinity. So this much is the movement. So very small movement of object is responsible for the very large movement of image and in fact you will be getting an asymptote. Now here you see, as the object moves from focus to pole, the image is moving from this virtual infinity to pole. This is the line. This virtual infinity to pole. And if the 
object becomes virtual so at pole what will happen image is at pole itself at pole what will happen the image will be at pole itself and if the virtual object is moving from pole to infinity the image is moving from pole to focus so this is your image line and this is your object line this is also infinity this is also infinity so this diagram will basically make you clarify many concepts about the ray diagram those students who have the better understanding of ray diagram they can understand the message which i want to convey basically by this movement of object or parallel to the principal axis so by this diagram before this diagram you are supposed to clarify your whole concept of ray diagram that how in ray diagram the object is at infinity image is at focus see how size is increasing it is giving you many hidden information all hidden information you are getting from here object is slightly left side of it focus image is very near to infinity in fact it is real therefore while drawing the ray diagram if you are moving from this side you can say that when object is at focus the image is at infinity highly magnified but if you are moving from this side you can say that the image is at infinity virtual image is at infinity and it should be highly magnified so this thing i hope will be helpful to you in understanding the ray diagram and this side is representing the virtual object so if the virtual object because this side real object is not there virtual object is, if this side the virtual object is moving from pole to infinity if the virtual object is at infinity you will be getting the image at focus and as the virtual object moves from infinity to pole the image moves from pole to focus from this diagram it is clear so this is the object line and this is the image line image line now i am giving you the homework to think on the same line about the convex mirror think and draw the similar figure similar figure for convex mirror and with this i'm finishing the spherical mirror spherical mirror related all related concepts and theory i have discussed which will clarify the hidden concepts behind the optics light light appears very simple but don't take light as lightly because it is not so simple so always remember this thing and this concept we will discuss some new concept in the next lecture in the next class till then goodbye have a nice day to all of you